Good evening and welcome to the news-packed program that has more column inches than Warren Beatty, allegedly. <laughs> in the news this week, there's a surprise as Michael Foote puts in a late bid for the Labour leadership. <laughs> in the Falklands, the economic boom continues to improve the islanders' lifestyle as they hold their first ever Grand National. <laughs> As the first edition leaves the printers at Wapping, paperboys complain that the new look Sunday Times is getting too bulky. <laughs> oh, on this week's show, a change to the advertised programme, you're not as billed in the South Wales Argus going to see a group of Bayaka pygmies from Central Africa travel to Paris <laughs> to perform in a festival of African music. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, due to financial restrictions, we only have four Bayaka pygmies. <laughs> Uh, from central London. Uh, first of all, on Ian Hislop's team, General Secretary of the TUC and a man who lists as his recreations in Who's Who, painting, poetry and canals. Not sure what he does with them or how many he has in his collection, but welcome anyway, Norman Willis. And on Paul Merton's side, someone who's been on the show several times before, but never actually in person, uh, <laughs> recently elevated to the upper house and, uh, as a result, granted the right to drive sheep across Westminster Bridge, although we're not sure how many he'll get into the Volvo, the, the future Lord Cecil Parkinson. So let's ebb gently into round one, an up-to-the-minute piece of film footage per pair. To which story does it relate? Ian and Norman, a tragic tale for you. Oh, how sad. <laughs> <laughs> miss? Miss? Oh, miss? Miss? <laughs> we went stronger glasses. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's the one about them losing all their money. Yes, so a lot of them are right down to their last Ferrari. <laughs> I mean, my heart bled, I know. <laughs> I mean, they had only, what, 20 years of getting 30% on unearned income? What a bugger! <laughs> mm. They're called names, like greedy idiot. And... <laughs> You're not a name, are you, Cecil? I'm not a name. No. <laughs> but if I owned a private eye, I would be. <laughs> you're, you're probably rather glad you're not a name, I think. Yeah. Uh, at a crisis Ferrari. meeting, one uh, angry woman began the proceedings by demanding to know how many noughts there were in a billion. She'll find out soon enough when she gets her next bank statement. <laughs> Another woman uh, demanded that the underwriters responsible should be called up and sent to the Gulf War. So she's obviously got a finger on the pulse. <laughs> Uh, celebrity uh, Lloyd names include Freddie Laker, he's uh, got the golden touch, <laughs> hasn't he? <laughs> um, Camilla Parker Bowles, if only she had a boyfriend in high places. <laughs> and, um, and Robert Maxwell, who now deserves twice as much sympathy as he did previously. <laughs> uh, two times zero. <laughs> Paul Merton and... Uh, Sad about the boys Sutton. being arrested, though, wasn't it? Mm. <laughs> Shame. Been a sad week all round. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, a question of faith for you. Um, ah, this, yes, this is this like Mois Coelho, isn't it? Um, can cure, you can make people walk again if you put five pounds in this plastic bucket. <laughs> <laughs> if, he, if he can work miracles, ask how come he's got such a bad haircut? <laughs> <laughs> it is. Uh, it's uh, Dr. Morris Cerullo, Cerullo uh, alleged faith healer who's hired Earl's Court for eight days of evangelical rallies. Uh, one of his audience, a uh, Annie MacDonald of North Holt, claimed, For two years I've had to use a hearing aid. Now I can hear clearly without it. Asked if she thought it was a miracle, she said, 25 past three. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, it, I thought it was the other evangelical press lord. Did anyone read the story about Rupert Murdoch this week? He sacked a man who hired a stripper in a mm. News International conference, <laughs> proving he's the only dick allowed in News Corp. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ian and Norman, brace yourselves. Oh. <laughs> That's not Mrs. Bottomley. <laughs> Ballot paper, you must remember them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, I know what this time. I, I realise now. This is the St Ives story. 
where they would try and persuade people to vote Conservative by torturing them through the dentist. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and then when it didn't work, they gave them all proxy votes. Ooh. Yes, that's not true, is it, Cecil? No, it isn't. It Wouldn't just it? shows Norman's got this fixation about politics. I can't think why. Mm. <laughs> I gave it up in June. But, uh, Norman, actually, you're wrong. Earlier it's the than dentists. That, I thought. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. no, no. Well, that's, I thought about joining the TUC, but I decided I was too old. No, no, no. So Norman, we'll it's uh, we'll the dentists up. who that's are not balloting about whether they should leave the health service. I think, we can I think I'm in that. the wrong programme. <laughs> <laughs> well, join it. <laughs> I think I'd be Can we have another question from the man in the back? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, not you, madam. You've, madam, you've had yours. You've had yours, <laughs> right? <laughs> yes. It was uh, Britain's dentists who uh, threatened to go on strike. Uh, Mrs. Bottomley said, dentists should think long and hard before taking any action that might damage <laughs> patients. <laughs> well, I never bothered in the past. <laughs> you know, I would miss the plastic cup of warm pink squash and the... <laughs> Crunchy bits of filling you find under your tongue four weeks later. Uh, Paul and Lord Cecil, a short uh, history lesson for you. Um, tanks. Um, um, <laughs> it was that big. Um, um, <laughs> Czechoslovakia, is it the breakup of Czechoslovakia? It is. Czechoslovakia is splitting up, so they're going to be Czechs and Slovakians. Don't what know what happened to the O's. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's a drag for them, isn't it? Yeah. Nowhere to go. They're just so going to form an enclave. Yeah. <laughs> I'll just find another country that's very long and they can just go in, like United States, oh, America. <laughs> <laughs> good. <laughs> Nobody talks about these O's, you know, but it's, it's hard for them, isn't it? It's really difficult. Still, at least it'll give the England football fans a country they can pronounce. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and so, at uh, the end of all that rubbish, the un upshot of it all is that, uh, well, uh, Ian and Norman have a stolid two and Paul and Cecil have a lithesome six. I'm glad to see that uh, Norman's picked the losing side for a change. <laughs> <laughs> uh, round two waits patiently in the wings uh, while I give our panellists a quick rub down with our caption competition. A few choice moments to consider these graphic images. Ian and Norman, this one's for yours. <laughs> <laughs> Paul and Cecil, that's for you. And uh, between now and the end of the series, it's your heinous task to come up with a comic caption or two. And while you prepare to come up with it, we uh, move deftly into round two, our brief homage to the seedy world of tabloid fiction. Paul, the Iceman cometh. This isn't this the uh, sexual organs of a 50,000-year-old man uh, found to be not entirely empty? <laughs> Yes, um, <laughs> but that's half Just the story, happen. anyway. Do you know what yes, happened? Yes, ten women have uh, written asking if they can be impregnated uh, with uh, whatever he left behind. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's, uh, it's ex astonishing, but it's absolutely true. <laughs> it's uh, ten women who've independently asked Innsbruck University uh, if they can conceive a child using sperm taken... There, I've said it, from... Uh, <laughs> From the frozen body. I was body. trying not to say s actually. <laughs> Thank you. So anyway, using that substance, uh, taken from the frozen body of the prehistoric man found recently in the Alps. Uh, scientists fear that this is possible, but it could be risky. They said, <laughs> we're uh, talking about a man who's 5,000 years old, covered from head to foot in coarse body hair, <laughs> and knows only a few simple words. It sounds rather like Gary Glitter. <laughs> Uh, he lived uh, way back in time when there was no civilization, no form of communication, and people knew what it was like to have a Labour government. <laughs> one, uh, one major drawback, however, was explained by Austrian researcher Nadia Riedmann, who pointed out that there is no penis. Uh, we don't know if it has shrunk or been eaten by an animal. Uh, shock reports from Wimbledon show that Andre Agassi may hold the key to the riddle. <laughs> Uh, Cecil, <laughs> if you can... <laughs> Cecil, who's been asked to uh, stop the grunt? Uh, Monica Selesh, who uh, makes a very peculiar noise every time she hits the ball. 
and uh, she's been asked to desist. Yes, it is. There is a story that apparently she fakes her first serve. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was a misprit, you know, usual silly grunts at Wimbledon. <laughs> <laughs> yes, um, yes, it's, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's Monica Seles and her habit of grunting passionately every time she hits the ball. The, uh, the authorities are considering outlawing the habit of grunting before serving, something they should have done with McDonald's staff <laughs> some time ago. <laughs> He's guilty. It's written all over his ears. They interviewed this uh, person and his ears went red. So they ran him in. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lovely little scenario, but completely well, wrong. <laughs> is it that um, they've said we that, don't know. that ears are as unique as fingerprints and that if you can get a picture of somebody's ears, then you can sort of, you know, say that's the person who did it? Mind you, I mean, their, their face would be quite nearby as well, really. <laughs> Um, it's, uh, yes, it is the news that the shape of the human ear is as individual as a fingerprint when it comes to catching criminals. Uh, what so sort of animal would eat a 5,000-year-old penis? <laughs> <laughs> what, uh, oh, well, sorry, we're halfway through the last question. Um, yes, it's the news that the shape of the human ear is as individual as a fingerprint when it comes to catching criminals. Uh, so burglars will have to be very careful when breaking into someone's house not to stick their ears into any soft putty. They <laughs> Apparently, ears are categorised in three sizes, small, medium and royal family. <laughs> uh, scientists now claim that it won't be long before they can reconstruct the face of a bank robber just by looking at the tights he was wearing over his head. <laughs> Always assuming his wife doesn't wear them again before the police get hold of them, or they'll be looking for a man with extremely chubby cheeks or a triangular beard. <laughs> if, uh... Jeremy Beadle is, uh, if Jeremy Beadle is arrested for the Brinks Mac job, we'll know what's happened. Uh, Ian, uh, a particularly adroit jeu de mots for you. Oh. Walt a cheek Fergie. I presume Perfect. this is either the Express or the Sun's attempt to spell the word what. <laughs> <laughs> quite near. She went to Disneyland on a freebie. No, she sort of went to the front of queues and got on rides early and... Um, Generally, she was a real laugh. <laughs> <laughs> yes, absolutely. Uh, two points. It is the... Uh... Didn't she have trouble leaving because they thought she was one of the exhibits? <laughs> <laughs> no, Paul, you're confusing uh, it with another A new story. ride or something. <laughs> <laughs> I don't pretend to understand that remark. Um, yes, well, let me explain it. No, no, no. <laughs> All of which uh, methodical madness brings us to the end of a further round, and the only discernible difference is that uh, in a normal... Ha uh, sorry. You apologise him for calling our guest normal. <laughs> The discernible difference is that uh, Ian and Norman have a uh, sickly four and Paul and Cecil have a silky twelve. Mm. And so we uh, press the stop button of life and rewind to yesteryear, which is a contrived and slightly twee way of saying it's time for our archive round. A couple of what happened next on which to ponder. Ian and Norman, here's your preamble. Hello, ladies. It's not working. Is it? Hello, ladies. Hello, ladies. Don't waste your vote, ladies. I'm sure I can't be heard above all this noise. Can I? It's very straightforward. She said it's not working. She was commenting on government economic policy. And, <laughs> and then she ran into some trees. <laughs> Who was that? It's Jill. It's, it's it? Michael Fuchs. Why, Jill Craig, is it? Right. I think so. It's, a, it's an excellent on She was riding them. around on an open top bus, and oh, the driver scary. didn't notice that, that there were trees by the side of the road, and he drove straight into them. So she disappeared <laughs> into the foliage. <laughs> oh dear. It was one of the reasons they didn't win the 1983 election. <laughs> Luckily, you abandoned most bus services after that, so they didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Well, let's see if you're yeah, correct. Next to one. I want to get on 
whole lot of the uh, shadow cabinet wives here uh, to come round in the bus with me. You're going to threaten them with that, right? I want to ask them to come out. Yes, uh, it is, uh, or was anyway, the wife of Michael Foote, uh, Jill Craigie, arguably the first green politician. She was, <laughs> after a mouthful of sycamore leaves, anyway. <laughs> Paul and uh, Cecil, another blast from the past for you. Nothing news will you're showing us. <laughs> is it what happened next? Ones, it is a what happened next. Stanley Matthews went on to win his FA Cup medal. <laughs> <laughs> Who was that man in those Pathé news wheels at the old cup finals? There's always a ma old man eating an apple, isn't there? Just as then you see the ball go in the net really quickly. <laughs> it's a bit late to get worked up about it, I know. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, oh, any idea? Is it, is it Iber Stanbrook? Stanbrook. <laughs> 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 yeah, from the world of teeth. Caps in the crowd were squaring up. A fight broke out immediately after this film was uh, filmed. Is that it? Well, no fighting let's... over the apple. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see how the concert continued. Police are looking for one with the red ears. <laughs> <laughs> it's a uh, Conservative candidate, Ivor Stanbrook. I think we probably established that now. Back in the days when uh, Labour were in power, hence the black and white film and penny farthings. <laughs> <laughs> nice to know that even in the age of peace and love, the public could still start fights for no apparent reason. <laughs> and the, uh, instead of going down the North Bank at Arsenal, they'd find the nearest Ivor Stanbrook concert. <laughs> so, uh, at the end of that nostalgic exercise, the painful scenario is that Ian and Norman have, uh, well, they have a rather uncertain six, and Paul and Cecil stand proud with 14. <laughs> and so we thrust pelvically into our forum for foursomes the infamous odd one out one. <laughs> for sacrificial lambs, which one is the black sheep? Uh, Paul, XMP Harvey Proctor, <laughs> Julian Critchley, Gary Lineker, <laughs> and. <laughs> the man currently sitting on your right hand. Do you buy your sh... <laughs> I thought you were looking pleased with yourself. <laughs> um, do you buy your shirts off Harvey Proctor? No, I don't. You don't? No. I thought, because I thought, he's a shirt manufacturer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Have you, have you scored something like 46 goals for England? <laughs> no? <laughs> um, well, if it wasn't in very poor taste, I'd say some of those people left the Tory party after scandals, but... Um, <laughs> that obviously yeah, isn't the yeah. answer. No, I think that's a bit below the belt, isn't it? Um, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Paul, you're I, I, Well, I don't know. Is, is it, um... Do you want the, your colleague to help you? Yes. Mm. Yes, I think he does. Well, it's, I'm sorry to disappoint you, Ian, but it's all about the shirts that oh. the people other than Gary Lineker are wearing. We're all alleged to be models for shirts. I was alleged to uh, be about to embark on a new career as a male model. So I never did. Uh, well, it's an interesting answer, because I've actually got a different... Uh, <laughs> No, you're mainly, you're mainly right. It's, uh, it's former MP Gary Harvey Lineker's Proctor I've got, uh, as all the others have modelled shirts, whereas Harvey knows. Proctor Absolutely. makes them, um, and indeed lifts them, onto, <laughs> onto, onto the shelves of his new shop. <laughs> Lord, Lord Cecil here modelled shirts last year, leading uh, his colleague Julian Critchley to... He didn't model shirts. No, I didn't. Ah, well, so do you believe him? Shirt. That is. <laughs> <laughs> Think of his record! <laughs> <laughs> the NHS enough. is yeah, safe. This, this I didn't model shirts. <laughs> <laughs> I've always fancy modelling them ah. underpants, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, where you're standing next to another bloke wearing underpants, pretending to look at something far off. <laughs> look, there's the bloke who's got our trousers. <laughs> Right, Cecil, um, <clears throat> four more sex symbols for you. Uh, Michael Foote. 
Nobby Styles, <laughs> Janet Street Porter, and Albert Steptoe. It's something to do with teeth, but I'm not quite sure what. Oh. <laughs> Janet Porter has rather a lot. Nobby oh, Styles that. doesn't have any but looks if he has. He has mm -hmm. large false teeth, which he was famous for. Janet Street Porter is the only one with her own teeth. Is absolutely correct. Well deduced. Yeah. Well, you wouldn't buy teeth like that, would you? <laughs> <laughs> it is. Uh, it you is. You went all the dentists leave. That's what I'm saying. Yes, thirty fifteen. Uh, Albert Septo was a scruffy object of ridicule who had false teeth. Michael Foot was also the owner of false teeth. <laughs> Uh, and Nobby Styles played football in the same era as Norman Bite Your Legs Hunter, only he was known as Nobby Gum Your Legs Styles. <laughs> Norman, stand by for your gruesome quartet. Michael Heseltine, Lal Krishan Advani, extremist Hindu politician, Arthur Scargill and Danny LaRue. <laughs> Three of them have been supporters of the Labour Party at one time. <laughs> But I can't think which three it is. <laughs> oh, I know. They're all transvestites except Danny LaRue. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll give you one for getting Danny LaRue, I suppose. Um, as your That's a charity. Quite That's quite a charity. <laughs> it's almost uh, patronising. <laughs> what back. do we do if we get it right? How much do we get if we get it right? Uh, you get two if you get oh. it right. Uh, but you wouldn't know that because you haven't had the government. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, um, it is, uh, it is Danny LaRue who's the only one not to win Radio 4's Man of the Year contest. <laughs> Although uh, in 1987 he was a runner-up to both Man of the Year and Woman of the Year. <laughs> Just being pipped to the post by Margaret Thatcher. Although I'm not sure which category that was in. <laughs> uh, Arthur Scargill won it for making the Miners' Union what it is today. Three Miners' Unions. <laughs> and Lal Krishan Advani originally won it in 1990 but was later stripped of it after it was noticed that there were several hundred identical postcards voting for him all in the same handwriting. Makes BAFTA look positively above board. <laughs> and uh, finally, Ian, prepare to be baffled. Mrs. Thatcher. Mrs. Thatcher. <laughs> Mrs. Thatcher. <laughs> and Mother Teresa. <laughs> One of, the, one of them is a living saint, um, the most wonderful, staggeringly beautiful and charitable woman in the world, um, according to the Telegraph. <laughs> <laughs> the other one, some nun who lives in Calcutta. <laughs> um, one of them did an awful lot for sick people. <laughs> I thought she led them for 13 years. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll give you a point. I think you probably got that it was Mother Teresa. Uh, but uh, the reason is she's, the, she's only ever come third in Radio 4's Woman of the Year contest, whereas Mrs Thatcher won it three years running, plus on five other occasions. Poor old Dennis must have been up all night writing those postcards. <laughs> Which uh, brings us cascading to the end of this oddball round, at which the contrasting fortunes are plain for all to see. Uh, Ian and Norman uh, have a virtually terminal eight, and uh, Paul and Cecil have a vibrant 17. Onwards and ever sideways as we thunder into our final missing words round. Two handfuls of headlines, each with a salient part conspicuously absent. Name that part or suggest what it might have been is our traditional challenge. Those currently uh, languishing in last place, to wit Ian and Norman, can uh, revel Never. in the thrill of going first. So to your marks. BR to test who for drugs abuse? It's the staff and uh, if they're found positive they can then mingle with the passengers. <laughs> Them at home. Next, uh, Yeltsin We're leaves Washington in what? Uh, jacket potato. <laughs> Yeltsin leaves Washington in the United States. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a geographically precise answer, but um, <laughs> inaccurate, sadly. But both Triumph in the United is, in fact, States. the answer. Next, uh, Kinnock would consider offer of what? Anything. <laughs> is it paper round? <laughs> 
Um, not Canadian necessarily. Europe. It's Europe. Yes, it, job and, yes, Brussels' job is, is yeah, the right no, that's answer. Right. I and, uh, think they got there slightly the, before you. Next, yeah. Queen may go where? Bananas. <laughs> is it like a train? <laughs> <laughs> I'm uh, delighted to say that it's not like a train. Well, you um, don't know, do you? <laughs> To the scrapyard is, uh, is the answer. And lastly, Ivana Trump denies affair with who? The following. <laughs> Angus Deaton. Uh, it's Deaton anyway. No. <laughs> Italian is, in fact, names. a rather uh, dull answer. Uh, right, here we go. Paul and Cecil, here's your lot. MPs ask for what? Rise. Mind expanding drugs. <laughs> Which was, uh, Clough is in fact the answer, rather sensible one. Next, Saddam cashes in his what? Gyro. <laughs> Gold, in fact, is the answer. Gaps in Mellor's what? Oh, that's the exciting. Next one. Gaps in Mellor's <laughs> social uh, calendar. <laughs> Can't give you any marks or there. Ozone well. layer. <laughs> I'm not aware that he has one. Team is in fact the Team? answer. Team yeah, <laughs> is correct, but late. Uh, next, and you've only got one right so far. Charles and Di take what trip? <laughs> well, <I'd> Acid. Be... <laughs> um, foreign trip, isn't it? Ego. It's rather more Separate romantic trip. than that. Uh, love trip. <laughs> And, and finally, Captain Bob continues to what? Decompose in his grave? <laughs> uh, haunt is, in fact, the answer. Which uh, exhaustive demonstration of potluck brings us to the end of this final round of our final show. And the alarming news is that this week's trusty steeds are Paul and Cecil with 17, and this week's dozy nags are Ian and Norman with 12. <laughs> So it's a round-the-world cruise for our winners uh, and a away day in Croydon to our losers. <laughs> but uh, all is not quite lost yet, because uh, why, if it isn't our caption competition, Ian and Norman, any thoughts of this? I thought it was the concert. Old Four Eyes is back. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, it's him saying I did it my way. I know what it and is. And him saying I did it her way. No, I've got it. Right. Uh, Paul and Cecil, thank you. What about yours? Don't blame me, it was your idea to invite the SAS. Marriage <laughs> <laughs> guidance council gets tough. <laughs> <laughs> On which uh, conclusive note, we say thank you to our guests, uh, Ian Hislop and Norman Willis, Paul Merton and Lord Parkinson. And I leave you with news that John Smith today attended the inaugural meeting of the John Smith Fan Club. <laughs> in Dorset, after months of research, Gallup managed to track down Sky Television's viewer. <laughs> And finally, after ten weeks of relentless criticism from this programme, Her Majesty the Queen issues her official response. <laughs> Good night. There's a theory that if you took all the blocks that make up the three great pyramids, you could build a wall around France three metres high. Next tonight on UK TV Documentary, we find out about the last ancient wonder of the world, the Giza Pyramid. <laughs>